Breaking news tonight in Montebello. You're looking at live pictures here from Air 7 HD. Police have been pursuing this minivan. That pursuit has come to an end, but the standoff has not. Chris Christie overhead in Air 7 HD. Chris. That's right, Mark. That pursuit coming to an end via a pit maneuver by Montebello PD just a few moments ago as that uh, minivan spun out of control, ended up in this position that you see here. At one point, he actually put it back in reverse, tapped those two SUVs, but has been sitting still non-compliant ever since that pit maneuver. We'll go ahead and roll some video back of that pit as they gave the go-ahead following two successful spike strips as this driver was driving very slowly through this neighborhood near Whittier Boulevard and Taylor. This coming to an end on Taylor just north of Olympic. You can see the minivan losing control there. Didn't do a full 360, ran into a parked car and is now wedged between the curb and those uh, Montebello PD SUVs. Now a number of officers out of their vehicles. They have deployed less lethal um, projectiles through the passenger side. The driver refusing to come out, although he occasionally pokes his head out of the driver's side window. You can see it looks like another object has been fired through that passenger window. A little bit of smoke there. We missed it for a second there. Uh, couldn't quite see. Might have been a pepper ball or something similar that was deployed into that minivan. We don't know if there's anybody else inside this vehicle, but this chase was a very bizarre, very slow speed pursuit. Very indicative of somebody who might possibly be under the influence. So we don't have a lot of confirmed information in that regard just yet, but you can see they did uh, shatter that passenger side window glass all over the pavement down there. There are now numerous Montebello PD officers around the rear of this vehicle as they try and get this driver to comply. So far, he is showing no signs of giving up. We just hope they could bring this to a peaceful end, Mark. Yeah, and his movements inside are so erratic and making it, his hands are, are all over the place. And Extremely if, if erratic, an officer, very animated. He put some objects on the dashboard. Uh, we're not exactly sure what they are. At one point we saw maybe uh, some drink cans. We see de definitely uh, one of the uh, uh, older, uh, the clubs that oh, you would right. use to lock your vehicle uh -huh. sitting on the dashboard there, but that could also be used as a weapon. Those are pretty uh, heavy pieces of metal, but you can see him very animated, as you mentioned not able to control this vehicle apparently, although we did see some movement after he came to rest here, but it has not moved for some time now for the better part of the last five minutes. He's been basically sitting perfectly still right there, refusing to come out. Wow, and this uh, should be, just to give our viewers some, some more information about the van, we don't know whether it was stolen. I'm not sure if we have more about the specific want that led to this pursuit. But the band may belong to a mariachi, the van rather, may belong to a mariachi band. There's a, there's a band name and a phone number on the, ba on the rear window. Uh, so we don't know if this person might be connected to that organization or if this was just stolen. Uh, the guy's wearing a hoodie, clearly, and just behaving very erratically inside this vehicle. Uh, apparently, now, well, the, the irritant may cause you to do that if they shot a pepper ball in there or two or three. Uh, that can make you uh, have some real problems. But uh, all he has to do is get out, and this thing will all be over. And he's not doing that. No, in fact, you can see he's clearly trying to use that hoodie to cover his mouth. He's having a little bit of trouble breathing. And as you mentioned, that is the exact purpose, the intent of those uh, tactics, to try and get that person out of the vehicle. It sometimes it becomes too smoky in there or too gassy inside the car and hopefully uh, they can get him out. But he is being persistent, staying, remaining in that driver's seat, just trying to not breathe in as much of whatever was uh, uh, shot in there. And you can see they are now, well, basically uh, looking at other options, trying to figure out what their next step is gonna be. Mm -hmm. They may at some point call in uh, for some help from the sheriff's department possibly, or uh, they may bring in additional backup. Um, Montebello does have resources, but they may, may uh, that they uh, that they um, you know don't have quite all the resources for they they mm -hmm. have time on their side here but with a driver like this refusing to come out of that minivan they are going to be patient with him especially not knowing his mental capacity what state he's in um, and you know, you know 
basically give it every effort to try and bring it to a peaceful resolution. So there are two non-lethal uh, elements that I can see kind of at their disposal right now. You've got the officer there behind the light pole with the pepper balls. Looks like he, he, we just saw him reloading and yep. uh, look, looks like they may have fired some more into the vehicle just now or be about to. And yep. you've also got the canine vehicle right there behind them. We don't know if the dog has been, the dog certainly hasn't been brought out of the, the vehicle that we can see. So um, there, there are some methods at their disposal that they can try to use before they would have to resort to something else. Um, but again, this guy is not giving up. He's, the, the behavior is strange. He, it seems like he's wiping things off. I can't really tell. It's really hard yeah. to tell. It's hard to tell. By our count, they fired at least two rounds into the vehicle, maybe even a third. Uh, but he is still moving around, and it certainly appears that the keys are still in the ignition, or at least the car is still on, if you will. Obviously, the lights are still on there, those headlights, um, but we have not seen any change in posture since he last moved the vehicle, what appeared to be on his own accord, despite that pit maneuver, which was able to disable the vehicle temporarily. He was able to move the, the vehicle very slightly, um, first forward and then backwards into those PD cruisers. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, I don't know if our assignment desk has been able to determine this yet or if the uh, police chatter has given some indication to you, but do, do we have any idea of what the original want was for this vehicle? I know our assignment desk is still efforting those details. There was, a, I think I heard something about a hit and run over the scanner and uh, just, you know, from what we've been observing, uh, clearly uh, uh, some some inabilities behind the wheel there. Again, I can't confirm that he is under the influence, but the nature of this pursuit, the way he was kind of weaving around the road, very slowly doing circles in this neighborhood, basically circling the same block over and over and over at a very, very slow pace. He would occasionally mix it up, but he was going up and down Whittier Boulevard in the area of Whittier and Montebello, basically taking them taking them on a very, very short joyride around the neighborhood. Again, not leaving this general area. And uh, it actually was so predictable, it gave them the opportunity to execute not one, but two successful spike strip attempts. Eliminating those front tires, at least that front left tire, which is very heavily damaged, almost down to the rim. Mm -hmm. And then I believe also a solid flat tire on the front right side as well. So his, uh, his he hasn't really shown a whole lot of competence behind the wheel and the vehicle is basically disabled uh, as far as as far as it appears from this vantage point. Like I said, he has not moved that vehicle in some time, although he was able to put it in reverse. We believe that was him doing it intentionally into those cruisers, but now as long as we've been on the air, basically that minivan has been sitting still. The driver is not sitting still. The driver is very animated, very agitated. He is further agitated. He was shot inside the vehicle. Now you can see him reaching across the passenger seat, reaching for something. That Some kind of can, something you know, in What can. else is in that vehicle? If he's armed, God forbid, this could certainly go sideways. It looks like a water bottle. All right, well, what we're going to do, we're going to keep you on station there. We're going to keep an eye on this. We'll be recording it as it uh, as it goes. If there's anything, uh, any new developments here in the standoff with this individual in Montebello, we will uh, certainly cut in and uh, bring it to our viewers. Uh, again, this, some, this is pers a person who was in this vehicle and uh, was involved in a pursuit with Montebello PD. They did the pit maneuver. They've stopped the vehicle. He's not getting out. They're deploying pepper balls. And so far, he is resisting any effort to bring him to heel. We will see how this develops, and we'll bring it to you. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7 content by clicking the subscribe button for our YouTube channel. And download the ABC7 Los Angeles streaming app on Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, and Roku to watch on your TV.